بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد One of the aspects in one's journey to Allah سبحانه وتعالى that uh, a true believer has to acknowledge, embrace and act upon it which is the absence of knowledge of the knowledge of the unseen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only had this knowledge it has been narrated that one of the main known scholars you know, there's some narration that said it was an Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala wa radiyallahu anhu that he saw in the dream the angel of death one of the concerns of Imam Malik in this narration is to die in Medina. He lived in Medina. He's the Imam of Darul, Darul al Hijra. And all his dua is to die in Medina. And Alhamdulillah, he died in Medina. Then his concern, he asked the angel of death. He came to him in an in image of a human being. He said, when is going to be my end? Yeah. So he saw the angel of death pointing with with his hand five he woke up very bewildered he does not know it's like the next five hours that he gonna go maybe the next five days five months five years it's a big question so he was trying to find but someone subhanallah when he goes through uh, the dream sometimes they will not be uh, you know kind of have that awareness and that focus because that shock have them subhanallah to not be able to look into the interpretation of the dream it has been said that at that time also there's the uh, tabi uh, or like some of the great interpreter of the uh, dreams and is no one actually ibn sirib so he sent his ghulam to ask so he knew that he's from from an Imam Malik. So he smiled and told them the five that the angel of death was pointing, it's not a term, it's not a time. There are the five keys of the unseen that no one knows except Allah. And they are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enumerate them in the end of Surah Luqman. In Allah in the ilmu sa'a wa yunazzilu al-ghayth wa ya'lamu ma fil arham وما تدري نفس ماذا تكسب غدا وما تدري نفس بأي أرض تموت. The only one who had the knowledge of the hour is Allah. The only one who knows when the rain will come is Allah. Don't be deluded by the forecast. Because only Allah knows, even the angel they don't know. When the angel they know, that becomes like entering the physical world when it comes to the physical world that there will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed for people to have that level of knowledge to predict, to forecast and so on. Um, which is like there's a story on the side. The people there are in the international seminar about economics. And this person who given his presentation is doing like putting a lot of math on the board how to increase the production, how to do this, and how to the revenue. And there's one of our brother from Africa. They seem like he does not know, but he was the smartest, I believe, among all of them. Because when he finished, he asked him a question. He said, what if the rain would not fall? And the one who's given the presentation could not answer. Because all what he re written does not have any meaning and does not have any sense if there's no rain. Which is mean all what you're doing in a godless perspective is like you control everything but you don't have anything. Because the only one who said the ghayt is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows whatever in the wombs. And then also be deluded that the science now will tell you is male or female. No, ma fil arham. He didn't say man fil arham. Who is like a male? Ma is whatever in the arham. So it includes. The psychology of the person, the nature of the person, the mood of the person, the future of the person, the action of the person, the rizq of the person, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that nobody else knows. 
And nobody knows what is going to happen tomorrow, and nobody knows when they're going to die. Nobody. We have our brother, all of you know Kashan. I received a text from him talking about his aunt in India. Subhanallah. She was preparing suhoor for her family. An accident happened, thing fell, fire gets it hard lit, and she gets burned. Suhoor, preparing for suhoor. Making dua for her, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to cure her. No, I didn't finish. Then, when we went back, I get his text, he said she passed away. She passed away. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make her own way, and to make her own way, ويغفر ذنبها ويكتبها في عليين ويجعلها من أصحاب النعيم ويدخلها جنات النعيم. فهذا سبحان الله happening to us to people close to us nobody knows what is going to happen. Can you imagine someone preparing for their family? You know, and we can imagine conceive it. سبحان الله that can happen to anybody of us. Now the person who passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on them. Because it is a mercy. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take a believer in Ramadan, in a state of preparing for it, that's a worship. But subhanAllah, look the impact of such accident and incident on the whole family. Look that impact. How they're going to take it, how they're going to think about it, how much suffer they need. So you see the keys of the unseen, Help us, as we've been saying earlier, that you don't have anything. You don't have the control of anything. When the society today, they try to teach our kids and teach us that you can control everything, that you are in control of everything. Now you're not in control of anything. Wallahi, the next step that you do from here to the end of the masjid or from here to there, you do not have any control of it. Inna Allah yumsiku samawati wal arda an tazula. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is holding up the whole heaven and the earth to not cease. At any moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He will, everything will stop. Everything. Everything. Everything will collapse. Everything. And subhanAllah, once, look how weak we are. Can someone be a scientist, uh, so smart? And then, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take their brain, he gets it, Allah, uh, go and they start to forget things, and then start to diagnose with the Enzheimer. And a person who becomes become Enzheimer, subhanAllah, he becomes a totally different person. Even his own family, they cannot even communicate with them. He becomes like a part, a child or something like there. Nobody can talk to them, nobody can, see, you know, understand from them, and he's totally a different world. And this person was like, a professor or scientists or things and you can read in many of the stories uh, you know that big people who physician and everything and physicists who end up in that thing, and philosopher who end up without giving you details and names but look subhanallah how weak we are and these people they were arrogant they were like you know questioning the existence of God and everything and the end subhanallah they don't even remember who they are ماذا تكسب غدا وما تدري نفسا في أي أرض تموت therefore the great honoring that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering us is to work on your heart to be sajid a heart that need to be prostrated devoted and submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when you make like with the common sense with the logic and if you put on the side you know all what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you but look within yourself. You don't have any control. The only one who can help you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are in the grave by yourself, who can help you? Just to write the list of the people they love you, the thing that you have done, the security they do, you did, anything that you have done to protect yourself in the grave, nobody can help you. Nobody. Except one. Allah. Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. Yaqub alayhi salam, 
has a close relationship with the, and the angel of death. He's a malak, comes to visit him. He told him, when things are closed, can you let me know? He said, yes. So when he came to him, he said, this is the time. Because one of the grants that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the prophets, for the angel of death will take their permission to take their soul. The Prophet sallallahu had the angel of death came to take the permission. Sallallahu alayhi wa So he told him, he told him, are you coming to visit or to take my soul? He said, to take your soul. He said, but uh, you told me that you sent signs. He said, yes, a lot of signs. Your back is bending. You cannot even see. Hardly walk. All of that is signs. Is enough signs? You think that you're going to live for eternity? Barely you can walk? Huh? And this is, you see how many, subhanAllah, young ones they go before even the older one. For us to reflect on such a thing, because this is our reality. This is the truth. All what you see in the world outside is an illusion. They show you, subhanAllah, the, the, the commercial thing. Everybody is laughing. Everybody is happy. That's all that we have said is a facade. The reality is this. Tomorrow you're going to die. Who's going to be with you? And just a brief comparison. When the heart of a person is really, subhanAllah, motivated and, and by, by all these worldly life games. And it's a fact. It's a reality. We cannot deny it. I mean, look, like uh, all of us, we were like those, those kids. When you give him a candy, he's, he's so happy. Give him like extra dollars, he's so happy. You give him like a toy, everybody is happy. That part of rejoicing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us as a gift to also have rejoice, but not to make your focus on the rejoicing from the gains of the dunya. Now, when you have a person what dominating his heart, the rejoicing of the gain of the dunya, then everything related to Allah that justify it in a way to not embrace it. And we have two groups. A group of the believers and the group of the hypocrites. And when you say hypocrite, be careful. Do not think of hypocrite are people like, you know, they have signs in their faces so you can see them. No, they are people like you. If they sit next to you, they are exactly like you. You believe they are a believer. They might be your friend. They might be close to you. One of them, the, the, the best among you, the whole crowd that you see, to hug them all the time. And he's a munaf. And you don't know. It does not mean that, but we give you perspective, that these people, they were with the Prophet ﷺ. They were with the Prophet ﷺ. Therefore, the aspect that we have talked about, sabr, patience, tawakkul, and from this comes one aspect very important. It is your confidence and your trust in Allah. Trusting in Allah, different than trusting Allah. Trust in Allah, whenever you're going to do, you're going to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that He will, the only one who can greatly dispose of all your affairs and take care of you. And that's the tawakkul. That's the oneness of the tawakkul. However, how can you do such a thing if you're still not trusting Allah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I guarantee you rizq. But you're still inside, not satisfied. So that the lack in trusting. He told you, I can guarantee it. I guarantee it to you. I created you, guaranteeing to you your rizq. So why you are always worrying? So this is the fact to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people who do not have trust, in Allah, they will be exactly like the image that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala painted for us, which is the reality of the munafiqeen in surah that we have been uh, reciting. So, when the confederate army, they came, and they see, subhanAllah, things get tight, the believer, they, subhanAllah, violently shaken inside, but what happening, it might be their end, but they don't know tomorrow is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Tomorrow is in the hand of Allah. Tomorrow is not created yet. Tomorrow is not created. Only Allah knows what is going to happen. So if you are today, and there's an army, all of them, subhanAllah, around this, the Medina, only one intention is to exterminate the whole people of Medina, starting with the Prophet So those hypocrites, they love life. 
they love the gain of the life. Their ambition is to live, is to have fun. They don't want to die. They start subhanAllah to make up with things. So when the Prophet ﷺ, when they were digging the ditch and he saw the sparkle of the fire, the story when he was breaking the, the rock, and he said, he'll give them the glad tidings of Islam conquesting the sham and Islam getting into Persia and Islam subhanAllah getting to, to, to Egypt and so on. So it was impossible, you know, impossible for the people who do not have trust in Allah or trust Allah. It's impossible. You are in a state of weakness. And at that moment, that moment, what define your Iman? What define your future of the Iman? Because when you are in the most difficult time, if you do not trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the gift, the essence of Iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted to you, He's going to take it away from you. Remember, Iman, faith is a guest into your heart. Remember this, it's a guest. If you have a guest at home, you ignore the guest, you don't present for them anything, you don't honor them, what the guest is going to do? He's going to like take himself, open the door and he leaves. And he comes and where's my guest? He left. Why? Because you didn't even talk to him, you didn't even honor him. You disgraced this guest. That's how the Iman into your heart. You honor the Iman by showing him that you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a very difficult time and hardship. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught you, Sayyid inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajihun. To satisfy your heart and subhanAllah make like strengthen your heart to be steady, firm on those positions. That's how you're going to become a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the munafiqeen they said such a thing, they were like making a clan against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Why? This is, this is obvious. This is going to be like, that's why they start to plan and run away. Uh, you know, that some of them, they come to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa They say, our homes are like exposed. Give us the permission uh, to go. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uncovered them. He said, this is not like their home is like exposed. They want to run away. يُرِدُونَ إِلَّا فِرَارٍ However, the believer, they stayed. The believer, they never doubted, D despite the fact they were scared, they were like violently, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, shaken inside, but the trust in Allah. The trust in Allah, because tomorrow is in the hand of Allah, is not the hand of the army, is not in the hand of the injustice, is not in the hand of anyone who had the power of the veto today, it's not in the hand of Allah. What's happening in Gaza is under the watching of Allah, under the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why you keep continuing making dua, supporting them with all what you can, especially with the dua in these days, because tomorrow in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in the hand of anybody else. They can do whatever and whatever is happened because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted to happen. That's why the believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them despite the whole difficult situation, it increased their Iman. Why? Because they surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah promised us. I mean, if you're going to die, you're going to die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the one who had the will for you to die. Then you're, therefore, you are honored by this death. All of us, we are going to die. Everyone is going to die. You live 100 years or 200 years, or like 50 years, or 30 years, you're going to die. But to whom are you going to go? You're going to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the tomorrow that is in the hand of Allah, not yet created, then have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of it. In the meanwhile, has your heart to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be deluded. Don't try to justify it otherwise. Don't say, oh, Allah, those people, they might have right. No, nobody has any word of truth except what it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from his Prophet sallallahu Therefore, there is two kinds of true believers. Believer who passed away and believer who are waiting, trusting Allah and relying on Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore give them the greatest gift, the key, the key of the salvation is sabr, is sabr. Look, Yaqub called it sabrun jameel, sabrun jameel. The same Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha when she was facing, facing the biggest trial of the slander, she said sabrun jameel. Beautiful patient. And look, 
her beautiful patient, how it turned to be Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show her innocence in the Quran and have her name to be, subhanahu to be recited and her story to be remembered to the end of time. And how chaste and pure she was, radiallahu ta'ala. In these days, you have the time really to reflect on these meanings, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to have a devoted and heart filled with humility, prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do so, you're going to have khushu' in the salah. If you do so, you're going to have the sweetness of faith. If you do so, you're going to be truly independent from the, this life. If you do so, you're going to have such a strength and power that only Allah will be able to give it to you. And that is the true servant of Allah. أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّ فَاللَّهُمَّ اجْعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ يَا رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And to the salat, ya Allah.